Our next story has to do with two soldiers, one from World War I, long dead, and the other from the war in Iraq and very much alive. We found both of their stories in north central Missouri, connected by a bridge. There used to be some 30 covered bridges in the state of Missouri. Today, only four, and they are all now maintained by the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. This, the Locust Creek Covered Bridge, is the longest of the four. The bridge was built in 1868 to take Route 8 over Locust Creek. Route 8 was a cross-country road and the main highway across northern Missouri. But the automobile era brought newer, better roads, and U.S. Highway 36 replaced the old Route 8. And then after World War II, local farmers decided they wanted to straighten out Locust Creek. And it now runs to the east of its old creek bed, leaving this uh, covered bridges that spans dry ground. Denzel Haney is the man who oversees the Locust Creek Covered Bridge State Historic Site. Many people grew up in this area and uh, they remember it being in really dilapidated condition. Ravine that was underneath uh, the covered bridge is filled in with silt through the years and uh, about two years ago we finished the restoration. The bridge has been raised three times and uh, currently it's sitting about 15 feet higher uh, than what it used to be. Denzel Haney will also tell you about the boy who used to swim in Locust Creek and knew this bridge well. And his job actually has a lot more to do with that boy than with this bridge. Because the boy grew up to be a hero. When Pershing was named to head the American Expeditionary Force that would go to France, the nation applauded. For the first time in history, American soldiers would fight in the glare of world attention, with the entire world having a direct stake in the outcome of their effort. Denzel Haney first came here as a tourist himself, a history buff, who discovered that he knew as much as his tour guide did about World War I and Black Jack Pershing. So when the administrator's job opened up, it was a perfect fit. This now is actually our second visit to Laclede, the first time Denzel Haney showed us around the Pershing House and Museum. This is the Prairie Mound School. It was located uh, nine miles south of this location. General Pershing taught here. He told us a lot about Pershing's military career, Indian Wars, chasing after Pancho Villa, fighting in the Philippines, and of course, commander of the American forces in World War I. But Denzel Haney in 2003 did not know what he knows now about war. A few months after this visit, he put on a different uniform and left this peaceful town for one of the most dangerous places on earth. I was with the uh, 7-11th Transportation Detachment, a little seven-man unit out of uh, Jefferson City. And uh, we were sent to, uh, to Kuwait first. And then, uh, then we went to Iraq. And uh, we were assigned with the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force uh, handling transportation in, in the western two-thirds of Iraq. We were a little west of Fallujah. Um, there were a lot of activity, uh, some shelling. Uh, but believe me, uh, the conditions that I lived in were nothing compared to uh, many of the other Marines who were, and they were making even greater sacrifices uh, on the front lines. Did you find yourself telling people a lot about Black Jack Pershing and, and, and that war? Actually, yes. Uh, a lot of... Uh, Marines and soldiers later on, uh, their commanders would find out who I was and uh, uh, they would send their young soldiers or Marines to me and with simple questions. Uh, uh, basically, um, a lot of these National Guard units who had not seen action since World War I uh, would come to me and say, you know, why is our unit motto Rock of the Marne? And I would have to explain that that dates back to uh, World War I and, and and what all led up to that and, and um, why it's something to be quite proud of. Uh, and this happened throughout my deployment. With every rotation of Marines that would come through, I would get a, a whole long line of uh, young Marines who would, who would be sent to me to uh, basically explain uh, the history. For Pershing, the challenges in France were monumental. 
He had the task of shaping and training an army force, which in a year and a half would expand to two million men. They didn't really understand or realize the impact that Pershing had uh, across the military, uh, Marines, Army, uh, any land forces uh, can owe a lot of their, their uh, tactics and their, their um, establishment set up with Pershing. Yeah. But when Pershing's name comes up these days, it is often not because of World War I. The Gulf Wars and the War on Terrorism have given an earlier Pershing command new relevance. The Spanish-American War abundantly demonstrated Pershing's courage, but it remained for a subsequent event, the quelling of insurrectionary forces in the newly acquired Philippine Islands to bring out his qualities as a diplomat. There is a story that Pershing struck fear into the hearts of Muslim fighters by carrying out executions with bullets soaked in pig's blood. The story and the conclusion that it was or could be an effective tactic are widely doubted, but Haney has been asked often about this story. It would not surprise me if it was true, and it would not surprise me if it was false, uh, given the times and the conditions uh, that Pershing was faced with in the Philippines. But uh, notably, his actions in the Philippines were, were uh, pretty well documented, and yet there's no record of this anywhere. Uh, no one has ever stepped forward to say they were there. Um, a lot of details are, are kind of sketchy. Uh, the only thing that remains constant is General John J. Pershing. The American experience in the Philippines was long, complex, and controversial. There were no easy answers back then either. Denzel Haney, though, will continue to answer your questions now that he's back in Laclede, Missouri, back in his old uniform and at his old job. But this is not quite the same man we met a few years ago. As you come back, though, it, it must give you a different understanding of the guys who fought in World War I. Does, does, it, does it help you in a sense of uh, in, your, in your job as an interpreter here? It, it sure does. Uh, you, when you experience something like that, uh, not to say that I had it, had it uh, as bad as, as most of the uh, men who are currently serving over there, but uh, you get a real sense of, of uh, duty, uh, a sense of honor, uh, not only uh, for the, the sacrifices of the soldiers uh, whose names surround me, but of course uh, those in leadership positions. He brought something back with him from Iraq. He also left some things behind, Pershing boyhood home bumper stickers and brochures in hopes that a new generation of veterans will come by to pay their respects to an old hero and maybe walk in his footsteps. <laughs>